to A&M University. I am Michael McFraser, and I currently serve as the Interim Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. I count it an honor as well as a privilege to serve as the presiding officer for today's investiture ceremony. To preserve the honor and dignity of today's ceremony, I ask that you all take a moment to silence your cell phones. We gather here today to celebrate the beginning of a new chapter of leadership in the life of this historic institution. I welcome you to the official investiture ceremony for Dr. Tamikia P. Legrand, the ninth president of Prairie View A&M University. And now, let us all prepare to receive the academic processional. It is customary for official academic ceremonies to include presidential inaugurations to begin with a procession of academic divisions. Leading the processional and bearing the Prairie View A&M University mace is University Marshal Dr. Clarissa Gamble Booker. She is the first female to serve as marshal for Prairie View A&M University. She is a professor in the Whitlow R. Green College of Education. And now entering the arena is the Prairie View A&M University academic deans representing colleges and schools that offer academic degrees. Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. Tyrone Tanner. Dean of the College of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources, Dr. Gerard de Sousa. Dean of the School of Architecture, Dr. Nicholas Sabuni. Dean of the Marvin D. and June Samuel Brelsford College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Dory Gilbert. Dean of the College of Business, Dr. Munir Kadus. Interim Dean of the Whitlow R. Green College of Education, Dr. Anthony Harris. Dean of the Roy G. Perry College of Engineering, Dr. Pamela Obiama. Representing the Interim Dean of the College of Juvenile Justice is Associate Professor and Interim Department Head, Dr. Marna Centron. Dean of the College of Nursing, Dr. Alyssa Harris. Executive Director of the School of Public Health, Dr. Angela Branch Vital. Dean of Undergraduate Studies, Dr. Alfonso Keaton. Now entering are delegates from universities, learned societies, as well as K-12 partners and other distinguished guests from around the nation.
Please welcome to the arena members of the Prairie View A&M University faculty. Please welcome members of the platform party, which include the Honorable Ron Reynolds, Texas State Representative, representing the 27th District. The Honorable Stan Kitzman, Texas State Representative, representing the 85th District. The Honorable Trey Joseph Duhan III, Waller County Judge. The Honorable Ronald Leverett, Mayor, City of Prairie View. Mr. Bill Mahomes, Chairman of the Texas A&M University System Board of Regents. Mr. James Brooks, Member of the Texas A&M University System Board of Regents. Mr. S R. Sam Torn, member of the Texas A&M University Board of Regents. Mr. John Sharp, Chancellor of the Texas A&M University System. Dr. James Hallmark, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, the Texas A&M University System. Reverend Charles H. Luter IV, Dean of the Johnson Phillip All Faiths Chapel. Dr. Cynthia Jackson Hammond, President of the Council of Higher Education Accreditation. Dr. Stacy N. C. Grant, International Pre President of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Ms. Carlotta Pickett, representing the Pickett 
and Smith family. Mr. Herbert Thomas, chair of the PBAMU Student Council, staff council rather. Dr. David Rembert, speaker of the Faculty Senate. Miss Gabby Orgy, president of the Prairie View Student Government Association. Mr. Mark Falls, president of the Prairie View a and University National Alumni Association. Dr. Brenda Allen, president of Lincoln University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Cynthia Carter Horn, senior vice president for business affairs and chief financial officer. Dr. Magesh Rajan, vice president of research, innovation and sponsored programs. Dr. Serena Willis, vice president of enrollment management and Mr. Edward Willis, Interim Vice President for Student Affairs. And now, all under the sound of my voice, I ask that you would stand and please welcome the ninth president of Prairie View A&M University, Dr. Tamikia P. Legrand. Now that all official parties are in place, I hereby call this investiture ceremony to order. It is a solemn and a joyous occasion where the new president formally accepts the symbols of a office as well as the tasks and responsibilities associated with managing a complex academic or organization. Today, we greet the members of Prairie View A&M University faculty, as well as the staff and the student body. We also bring special warm welcome to Dr. Legrand's family. We bid welcome to representatives from our sister institutions from across the Texas A&M University system, as well as the nation. And we welcome our special guests, our delegates, our VIPs, and all educational partners. Also in today's attendance is officials from across the state, past presidents, representatives from schools and communities, partners, elected officials. Would all elected officials raise your hands to be recognized? Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the PVAMU ROTC, singing of the national anthem, followed by Lift Every Voice and Sing, performed by Prairie View Concert Chorale under the direction of Dr. Demetrius Robinson and the invocation by Reverend Charles H. Luter IV, Dean of the Johnson Phillip All Faiths Chapel.
Good morning. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Almighty and eternal creator, we have seen your craftsmanship and your handiwork as the sun rose before men and women assembled today in this place. And for this, we say thank you. It is by your power and might, wisdom and justice, and especially your love that continues to navigate our journeys throughout humanity efforts for world peace. It is our petition for your spirit of counsel and fortitude to guide the ninth president of Prairie View a and University, Dr. Tamika P. Legrand, that her leadership will transform, her commitment to elevate others, and her integrity be examples of excellence on this hill. May she be encouraged to seek your wisdom when challenges come. May, re may she rejoice in your presence when excellence is manifested. May she continue to remain grounded in her decisions, prayerful in her existence, and faithful to plant seeds for trees that will bear fruit of significance, relevance, and eminence. We beseech thee, O Creator, to allow the hearts of faculty, staff, and students to strengthen their faithfulness to see the vision through a different lens like never before. Truly, we are experiencing a new ethos that excellence truly lives here. Now bless the spirit of this day. Let us embrace the beginning of a new era with the new and exciting leadership at Prairie View a and University. It is in the peaceful name of the Mighty One. And let all of us say, Amen. Thank you, Dean Luter. An investiture is one of the oldest traditions in academia, but also serves as a sign of a new and strengthened relationship between the university and the people it serves, the students, the faculty, the staff, the alumni, and the community. This pivotal moment reaffirms our renewed commitment to do our part to advance the mission of Prairie View a and University. A university president has many responsibilities. To be successful, the president of Prairie View must develop and maintain close personal and professional ties with leaders of the nation, state, and local communities. Due to unforeseen schedule conflicts, the Honorable Sheila Jackson Lee could not be with us today, but I am delighted to welcome to the podium the Honorable Ron Reynolds, Texas State Representative representing District 27, to bring remarks on behalf of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it for this auspicious occasion. I'm excited to be here. And no, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee could not be here this morning, but she sends her regrets. She is fighting in the United States Congress. I am Ron Reynolds, proud to serve as state representative and chair of the Texas Legislative Black Caucus. And let me tell you, this is a great, great historic day for this ninth president of the Prairie View a and University. And I could not think of a better time than during Women's History Month as we celebrate the tremendous accomplishments of women in these United States of America. And you know, chance, that's right, give, that's right, give women a round of applause, that's right. Absolutely, every man should be really, really applauding because none of us will be here without a woman. But let me say this, Chancellor Sharp, the Board of Regents at Texas A&M University, they had a really, really big task because let's be real, anyone coming after 
Ruth the Truth had to be a phenomenal person, right? Y'all, really? Is this mic working? That is like the Bulls when Michael Jordan retired and you had to get the next best person. They had to do a national, international search. And there was only one person that could come into this university, and that is the person that we're installing today in Dr. Legrand. That's right, there's only one. And I know I may get in a little bit of trouble from this, but it had to be a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. But let me tell you why. Because she embodies the bold, audacious leadership of the spirit of a Barbara Jordan. She personifies phenomenal woman that Maya Angelou described in her poem. She has the education, and I know this because we both got our doctorates from Texas Tech University, and she has the academic experience from before she got here, and she has the passion for students, for staff, and this entire community. And let me just say this as I go to my seat. This is an unprecedented time in our country where we need to have great HBCUs like Prairie View A&M University, more so than we've had in the past. Now this is me talking as chair of the Legislative Black Caucus. We've seen the Supreme Court gut race-based admissions. We've seen attacks on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So that is why it is so important that we have great leadership at Prairie View A&M University today. And I'm very confident as I sit here today with this great audience. And I want to recognize Dr. Suleiman Lalani, one of my colleagues in the legislature of House District 76. Give it up for Dr. Lalani. I see County Commissioner Kendrick Jones, my fraternity brother of Alpha Phi Alpha, and all of you to witness this historic day. So congratulations, Dr. Legrand. Congratulations to Prairie View A&M University and this entire community. The state of Texas is very proud to have a university like this with a president leading the future to educate our students and prepare them for great leadership to compete in a global economy. God bless you, God bless the great state of Texas, and God bless the Panthers of Prairie View A&M University. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Reynolds, for your inspiring words. Now I invite the Honorable State Representative Stan Kitzman of the 85th District to bring greetings on behalf of the Texas House of Representatives. What a privilege it is to be here today at Prairie View A&M University for this occasion. I look out upon the crowd and uh, there's some friends in the crowd. Coach, we're here because of you. And, uh, but we're here to celebrate what uh, I thought started out as a day, President Legrand, after last night's storms, we look out at the sunrise and, and see the beautiful day that the Lord has provided and I couldn't help think but that was the best symbol that we could have for your presidency. I am Stan Kitzman. I'm the state representative for, for what includes Waller County, so it includes Prairie View. And um, to be here today and look to the future of this great university and its place in the history of Texas and in the nation, in research and academics and the defense of our nation, in the continued success of our land-grant mission uh, I bring you, as a member of the legislature and a member of the House representing, greetings and best wishes for your continued success, and we are here to support you, and thank you for everything you're about to do. Thank you. Thank you, State Representative Kitzman, for your support of President Legrand and certainly Prairie View A&M University. Please welcome the Honorable Trey Duhon, County Judge of Waller County. Good morning. To all of you that are here today, 
whether you're a visitor, <clears throat> a student, a faculty member, a friend, a family member, or a resident, on behalf of Waller County, I want to welcome you here today for a very historic and important moment. My name is Trey Duhon, and I have the honor and distinction of serving as county judge for Waller County. And for those that may not know, Waller County was created in 1873. And just a short three years later, this university was founded in 1876, becoming the second oldest public institution of higher education in Texas. Located on what I undoubtedly can say is one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. <clears throat> Prairie View A&M is truly the gem on the hill and an educational center point of our county. Now, Dr. Legrand will be the third Prairie View A&M president that I have had the opportunity to work with. That's one third of the nine presidents that have served Prairie View A&M, and I don't even feel that old. <clears throat> Starting with Dr. George Wright, and then Dr. Ruth Simmons, who we know as Ruth the Truth, I have personally watched as each president has continued to build on a foundation of excellence laid by their predecessors. And each president has continued a legacy and tradition of success, helping the university and its students to reach new heights year in and year out. And I have worked with each of those presidents to build a long lasting partnership between the county and the university I've worked with the College of Agriculture and Human Sciences when it came to developing our comprehensive strategic plan for the county. The Prairie View A&M College of Juvenile Justice works with our district attorney on our pretrial diversion program. And I've seen the K-12 strategic partnership of Prairie View A&M with our school districts, Waller ISD, Hempstead ISD, and Royal ISD where young folks can learn and be introduced to the college world and the opportunities and careers that they can pursue right here at Prairie View A&M. And I look forward to building even more partnerships under Dr. Legrand's leadership. During that time, I've watched the campus and the student body continue to grow. New buildings, new facilities, more students, and just like Prairie View A&M, Waller County is now one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Texas and the country. As people come to Texas from all over the world to seek new opportunities. And now many of those families more than ever are finding their home in Waller County. Because whether it's the university or the county, what we have here that attracts people is just that, opportunity an opportunity to obtain a first-class education, to create a bright future, an opportunity to raise a family, to be part of a community, and it can all be found right here. And now with Dr. Legrand, we turn a page in the history of Prairie View A&M University and we begin a new chapter. And I have no doubt that Dr. Legrand will fill those pages with stories of excellence because this is where excellence lives. And as Dr. Legrand charts new paths and creates new opportunities here on campus, I will be more than ready to help in whatever way I can to ensure that the legacy of success on the Hill continues. As an elected leader, I appreciate more than anyone the words that are written in the Bible. In the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 14, for many are called but few are chosen. So to Dr. Legrand, thank you for answering the call. By doing so, you follow a long lineage of leaders, a lineage of excellence, and I have no doubt that the chapter you're writing here will be filled with accomplishment and excellence as well. Congratulations, Dr. Legrand. Thank you, Judge Duhan, for the heartfelt words of encouragement for our president, President Legrand. Please welcome our next speaker, Mr. Ronald Leverett, mayor of the city of Prairie View. Well, 
good afternoon, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure for me to be here today. I'm excited to be among such dignitaries. I'm kind of wondering why I'm out here. <laughs> um, today is a very, very special day. Uh, first of all, I, I could almost give the address. I've been here so long. Uh, Dr. LaGrange and I talked about this uh, sometime, but uh, in as much as uh, we talked about the, in our meeting, we talked about the longevity she, I mentioned there. I, she spoke the other day, and I heard her say she's probably going to be here at least 10 years. When I came here in 1973, I said I was going to be here three years. <laughs> I'm still here. So, Dr. Grange, seven years, it's probably going to be a little bit longer. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure for me, as I said, to be here. Uh, it's an honor. Uh, Dr. Grange and I have a lot in common, as I said. Uh, we, both, we both graduated from HBCUs. I graduated from University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Uh, Doc, I forgot what university. Savannah State. Savannah State. Savannah State. Uh, we have that a lot in common. Uh, again, uh, I was a 60, I taught at previous 16 years. Uh, and this, as I said, this is a very, very, very special occasion for me to be here for the honor that to represent the city of Prairie View, of which Prairie View A&M University is in. That says a lot. Uh, Judge Duhon mentioned Waller County. Well, the city of Prairie View is in the center of Waller County. And having the, the uh, university, Prairie University, the second largest public institution of higher learning in the entire state of Texas says a lot. And I think we are, we are on the move to do some tremendous things with that. The city is beginning to grow with the, with the support of the university and the, and, the, and the county as well. So with that, uh, Dr. Grand. I would like to have you come forward and do something that is an honor, it's, rare, it's a rare honor, to present you with the key to the city of Prairie View, Texas. As I said, as I said this is a rare occasion, and I hope that you treasure that for the rest of your life. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Leverett, for that show of support and presenting the key to the city. Next, I, we will have a musical selection performed by the PVAMU Concert Chorale under the direction of Dr. Demetrius Robinson.
When our dreams take flight, wow, what a wonderful performance. Thank you to our talented students for that incredible moment. I now have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Cynthia Jackson Hammond. To the podium, she will bring greetings on behalf of the Academy. Good morning. I am honored to bring greetings from the Council for Higher Education Accreditation, advocacy for over 1,900 colleges and universities, and we serve as an advocacy organization for academic quality assurance. I am most pleased that Prairie View AM is one of those institutions. I also wish to applaud Prairie View AM for its continuing trajectory of excellence in the selection of Dr. Tamikia Legrand as the ninth president of this great institution. You will hear from many the tributes accorded to Madam President, and there really is not enough time to share all of those many attributes. So I'm going to take a few moments to talk to the Prairie View family. Higher education has witnessed enormous changes in the last 10 years. And during those changes, we have become a little bit more confused, worried. The complexities of higher education are immense. We have witnessed continuous assaults and confrontations on diversity, equity, and inclusion. But on the other hand, we have experienced innovations and technologies that are unparalleled. But higher education is forging new pathways with artificial intelligence. And how to use that technology to enhance and not for the detriment of our students. Women leadership is being challenged in small and major Ivy Leagues. Accreditation and quality assurance is being reframed. Lots of changes. Never before has HBCUs needed strong leadership as they do today. But Prairie View A&M is one of the fortunate ones. They have chosen a university leader like Dr. Legrand. There is no other like Dr. Legrand. So let me say to you, let her lead when times are good and when times are critical. Let her imagine when you forget to dream. Let her be a disruptor if it means transformation. Be there to lift her when she needs your strength. Dr. Legrand is a visionary and a compassionate leader. You need Dr. Legrand, and Dr. Legrand needs you. Excellence just does not happen automatically, by chance. Your mantra is excellence lives here. Let it continue to grow here. Together with fierce determination, Prairie View A&M will continue to thrive and reach immeasurable heights.
Be joyful for this day. Your tomorrows are the beginning of a magical journey. Like a good neighbor, you are always in good hands with Dr. Legrand. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jackson Hammond, for the uplifting and affirming words in support of President Legrand. I would like to now invite Dr. Stacy N. C. Grant, International President of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, to the podium to bring greetings on behalf of the National Panhellenic Council. Good morning. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. It is truly a blessing to be here this morning as we are gathered for such an auspicious occasion as stated. My name is Dr. Stacey N.C. Grant and I have the honor and privilege of being the international president and CEO of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, celebrating our own member on being inaugurated today as the ninth president of Prairie View A&M University, Dr. Tamika P. Legrand. It is with great excitement that I offer you congratulations on behalf of our International Board of Directors and our members, close to 900 chapters and over 130,000 across the globe, our Zeta Amici, our Youth Auxiliaries, and our Zeta Mail Network. But I'm also overjoyed because joining me to celebrate our very own member is our 24th International Past President of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Dr. Mary Bro Wright. And being here on another HBCU campus, Zeta Phi Beta was founded on the campus of Howard University, January 16, 1920, by five courageous college co-eds who set path forward for us that 104 years later, we're still standing on those tenets of scholarship service, sisterhood, and finer womanhood. So everywhere from Washington, D.C. to London, California to Germany, from right here to Houston to the Bahamas, we as members of Zeta Phi Beta are embracing the extraordinary power of she, advocating for social justice, health justice, and economic justice globally. So we are proud of you, Dr. Legrand, because you continue to prepare our future leaders of tomorrow. But I also have the distinction of being a member of the National Panhellenic Council Council of Presidents. When we think about what we are, as we are affectionately called, the D9, outside of the black church, we represent over 2.5 million of the movers and shakers in society, the educators, the business owners, those who create policy and influence transformation in our communities. So I want to take this moment to acknowledge my co-presidents and their organizations. From Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, General President Dr. Willis Lanza III, from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Supreme Grand Bassist Danette Anthony Reed, from Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Grand Polemark Jimmy McMichael, from Omega Psi, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Grand Bassist Ricky Lewis, from Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, International President and CEO Elsie Cook Holmes, from from Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, the Honorable Chris, v, Chris V. Ray J.D., International President, and from Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, Grand Basilisk, Rashida Liberty, who is a resident of Houston, Texas, and Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated, National President, Dr. Sean Housen. Together, we make up the Council of Presidents that is in a really interesting space right now in the world as we see it. As the leaders of these Divine Nine organizations, it is incumbent upon us to make sure that our members from the undergraduate level to our graduate status are engaged in making sure that we create a better future for tomorrow as this institution is doing. Someone once said to me, we are drinking from wells that we did not dig. And here, as we celebrate the new leadership of Prairie View a and I'm excited that our soror, Dr. Legrand, is what we will refer to as a Proverbs 31 woman. That is a special passage for members of Zeta Phi Beta. And I'm just going to quote two as I take my seat. Who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. 
Dr. Legrand, you look for opportunities to educate our future leaders. You pursued it and you continue to stand on the principles that you have always endeavored to uphold, not only as a member of our organization, but a child of God. And she girded her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. You are prepared for this next level of leadership in your journey. As you stand being strengthened by your faith, may you know that the members of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated and the entire National Panhellenic Council stand with you as we honor those founders who in the early 1900s didn't always have a welcome place at the table, but you are opening up doors to new seats. God bless you, my soar, and we are here to support you on this journey. Dr. Grant, we thank you and appreciate you for being here to honor our president. American writer and author Alex Haley once wrote, in every conceivable manner, family is the link to our past and the bridge to our future. Here today to share words of encouragement on behalf of the Pickett-Smith family is Miss Carlotta Pickett, the sister of President Legrand. Greetings from the Pickett and Smith family who hail from different parts of the South. We have traveled here to Prairie View, Texas to congratulate my sister, Dr. Tamika Pickett Legrand, on her inauguration as the ninth president of Prairie View A&M. To the university and the community, you picked a good one. I'm gonna give you a real quick little history lesson on her. Our maternal grandmother, Adele Smith, who could not be with us today, but her along with my grandfather raised 10 children. All of them went and had formal education beyond high school, but their mother only had an eighth grade education, but she instilled the value of education in them. Our paternal grandparents were in a very similar situation. They too had very limited education, yet they raised seven children and pushed them to work hard in attaining education. Our parents, Thomas and Barbara, raised us with morals that were very strong and strong conviction, a love of family, a true understanding of hard work, and occasionally they would sprinkle, sprinkle just a little bit of empathy, but never took any excuses. We watched our father, who was blind, paralyzed in a wheelchair, make a mark on society and our family because of how he treated people, especially the women in his life. Tamika has his work ethic, his judgment of character, and his no tolerance for excuses. She has my mother's height, her confidence, and her desire to help people, along with the vigor for fashion, especially shoes. She never backs down from any fight where she believes she is right. And I can count, she ain't never been wrong too many times. She has been my role model for as long as I can remember and my first ever friend. She is a shining star to her nieces. The thing about it is, she knew she was gonna be a president of a university, but she waited until there was the position that spoke to her. It was the history and the beauty of your campus and your commitment to your students that brought her back to Texas. When it comes to her resume, she can converse with Congress, she can cheer for her students and her athletes, she can dance and take pictures with alumni, and she can push and encourage her faculty and staff with mere phrases that any Anybody, who, anybody should be able to do as a president, but I bet they can't do it like her. My sister has worked hard to have the needed experiences to lead this university to its next chapter, but more importantly, she has the heart for this, and that is what makes her special. Congratulations, Prairie View A&M, on your next Madam President. Thank you, Carlotta, for that beautiful tribute to your sister. You have helped us to know who she is, and your words have inspired us to work diligently with her to move the institution forward. 
Next, I invite those representing Prairie View A&M University to bring greetings. I will introduce them all in mass, and they will come in the order introduced. First, Mr. Herbert Thomas, Chair of the Staff Council, will bring greetings on behalf of the staff, followed by David, Dr. David Rembert, Speaker of the Faculty Senate, Mr. Mark Falls, President of the National Alumni Association, Ms. Gabrielle Gabby, as we know her, Orgy, President of the Student Government Association. They will come in that order. Oh, how good it is for family to dwell together in unity. Pleasant and wonderful morning, Prairie View A&M University family. Dear honorable guests, distinguished colleagues, and President Lagrand. On behalf of the staff council, it is my great privilege to extend a warm congratulation and a heartfelt best wishes on this momentous occasion in our university history. The staff council acts as a channel of communication between the staff and the university administration. And during our meetings and interaction, Dr. Lagrand constantly demonstrated her unwavering commitment to involve the staff in shared governance. This investiture ceremony marks the beginning of a new chapter in our institutional history. With Dr. Lagrand at the helm, we are not just merely chartering a cause for our institution, but we are chartering a cause for every student who passed through our doors. This is a mission that is resound with all of us. It is a mission that we are ready to embrace wholeheartedly. I believe that the initiative that Dr. Legrand will spearhead in the coming years will not only unite us, but will help us overcome obstacles and strengthen our university community. As we come together to celebrate Dr. Legrand's official appointment, we look forward to bring to a bright and inspiring future under her guidance. And we, as the staff council, who represent our university colleagues, are excited to embark on this journey together. Together, we will strive to fulfill the university mission of achieving excellence and relevance in teaching, research, and service. And yes, we are confident that our collective effort will lead us to a successful and promising future for all. We look forward to work collaboratively with our new president, and we continue to achieve, and we continue to advance our institution and better our shared community. Today, we welcome Dr. Legrand as our new leader to our university. Madam President, the entire staff of Previan University, all 700 and 72 of us extend our warmest wishes for your very success as you guide us into a brighter future. You have our full support as we strive to make Prairie View University even stronger, more relevant, and more united. Thank you and congratulations, Madam President. Good morning. It is both an honor and privilege to stand before you today as we mark this occasion in history of our institution. T today we gather to celebrate this inauguration of our new president, Tamika pickett Legrand, and also we welcome a new chapter in our journey towards cementing Prairie View a and University as an institution of first class. In the history of our institution, we have seen leaders come and go, each leaving a permanent mark on our history of our institution. They have shaped our traditions, challenged us to grow, and, to, uh, and propelled us into the future. Today, as we turn the page to this next chapter, we all have to stand united when we challenge new possibilities, new challenges, 
and new opportunities. That's all stakeholders. President Legrand steps into this role at a pivotal time. As we navigate the complexities of the modern world, her vision for our institution as a beacon of knowledge, a hub for innovation, and a community of inclusivity is more relevant than ever. Her leadership comes at a time when the world demands academic excellence, social responsibility, ethical leadership, and a commitment to the betterment of society as a whole. Um, to President Legrand, I say, your journey to this moment has been one of dedication, perseverance, and a steadfast commitment to the values that define us. As faculty center speaker, I speak on behalf of my colleagues when I say that we are eager to collaborate, to innovate, and contribute to the realization of your vision. In other words, we support your vision for student success, academic engagement, campus culture, and what we need to do to attain Carnegie classification R1 status. Together we will continue to shape the minds that will shape the future, build bridges across disciplines, and make an impact that stands beyond our campus boundaries. To students, staff, faculties, and all members of our community, this is a call to engage, to participate, to contribute to the history of our institution. Let us embrace this new chapter with open minds, open hearts, and a shared commitment to the values that bind us. And in, conclu in conclusion, President Legrand's inauguration, remember this, is a celebration of our new leader, a reaffirmation of our collective commitment to excellence, to the community, and to the values that make our institution a place of learning, discovery, and growth. Together, under President Legrand's leadership, is no limits to what we can achieve. Thank you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless to the platform guests, esteemed faculty and staff, students, alum, family and friends, good morning. As I stand here today, I am exceedingly hopeful and optimistic about the future of this university. As stated, my name is Mark S. Falls, the 39th president of the Prairie View a &M University National Alumni Association. And I bring you well wishes from more than 75,000 alums spread around the world. This day is very important in the history of this university as it provides an opportunity for everyone to meet the ninth president who believes that change makers will be bred here. Pioneers will emerge here and excellence will live here. In meeting Dr. Legrand for the first time on the interview panel, I knew as a two-time graduate of HBCUs, she was the one to continue the legacy that Prairie View produces productive people. Then she shared with us how she's going to do it by revealing significance holding relevance, and promising eminence. 
Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the ultimate measure of a person is not where he or she stands in the moments of comfort, but where he and she stands at times of challenge and controversy. This quote holds true not just for individuals, but for institutions as well. Through your father's blessing, Dr. Legrand, Mr. Thomas W. Pickett, now the torch has been passed to you. So I encourage you to be a trailblazer as you take this university to the next level. So in closing, I ask you to take God's hand and consider the words of poet John O'Donoghue. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease and risk. Soon, you will feel right at home in a new rhythm for your soul senses the purple and gold world that awaits you for a new beginning. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Good morning. I am Gabrielle Oji, 42nd Student Government Association President, so internally grateful to represent the student body and speak on the great excitement we take as we witness the ninth president of Prairie View a and University become inaugurated. Today marks a momentum occasion in our history. As we gather to witness the inauguration of Dr. Tomikia P. Legrand, a leader who has not been chosen to guide us through the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead of us. It is with great pride and anticipation that we come together to celebrate the transition of leadership and power and the beginning of a new chapter for our Panther family. Not only does she make history by becoming the Prairie View A&M University president, but now she is the second woman to hold the office of president at our esteemed institution. And I wanna say congratulations. As we stand here today, we are reminded of the immense responsibility that comes with leadership. It is, it is the responsibility that Dr. Legrand does not take lightly and one that she undoubtedly prepared for with significance, relevance, and eminence. This inauguration does not just signify Dr. Legrand being sworn in, but is our president about the collective aspirations and dreams she will continue to represent in her tenure. The dreams exemplify a collective hope for a better future and to continue to carry the foundation of producing productive people on our campus. Throughout her journey, Dr. Legrand has demonstrated her unwavering dedication to servicing students. Whether it was through Tyrelee's advocacy for student financial awareness, her commitment to student success, or her visionary leadership in molding a new leader of servitude, Dr. Legrand has shown her ability to inspire, empower, and bring about a new journey of student success. But today is just not about celebrating past achievements. It is also looking forward with optimism and determination. As Dr. Legrand takes off her tenure of presidency, she carries with her the host of aspirations of faculty, staff, administrators, and the student body. And I have no doubt that she will rise to the occasion with grace, courage, and steadfast commitment to serving the greater good in her tenure at Tennessee. In the face of uncertainty and adversity, let us remember the words of Andy Andrews who once said, adversity is preparation for greatness. These words remind us that even in our darkest hours, we have the power to overcome challenges and build a brighter future together. That what challenges will strive for our campus, greatness will be ahead of us. 
So let us stand united in support of Dr. Legrand as she embarks on this journey of leadership. Let us offer her unwavering support and collect wisdom. And let us never forget the strength of our community lies not in the hands of single individuals, but in the bonds that uni unite us all and share values that guide us forward. Congratulations, Dr. Legrand, on this momentous occasion. May your tender be marked by wisdom, compassion, and progress. And may we all work together to build a future that is worthy of our highest aspirations. I appreciate all of the wisdom, grace, and patience that you have taught me from your child, your first Student Government Association President, Gabrielle Oji. Thank you. Again, thank you to all of our shared governance leaders for your official words to our new president. How honored and delighted we are to celebrate this rich day in the life of this great institution, to have so many distinguished guests and friends on campus. Today, we are delighted to have Dr. Brenda Allen as our guest speaker. Dr. Allen was named the 14th president of her alma mater, Lincoln University at Pennsylvania, on March the 11th, actually May the 11th, 2017. As Lincoln University's 14th president, Dr. Allen has been aggressively implementing a strategic plan designed to ensure Lincoln's place among great liberal arts institutions. Her efforts build upon the university's strong legacy of using liberal arts as the vehicle for producing world leaders who are globally engaged and committed to social justice. She has prioritized enhancing academic quality, improving operational effectiveness with projects such as revising the curriculum, increasing support for faculty teaching and scholarship, expanding co-curricular opportunities, and restructuring the administration. Dr. Allen's impressive higher education career includes serving as provost of Winston-Salem State University, stints at Brown University, Smith College, and Yale University. Her exemplary record in fundraising, enhancing academic quality, and improving operational effectiveness is a bold reminder of the great and necessary work to move the needle on student success in higher education. Please join me in welcoming our guest speaker, Dr. Brenda Allen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Need a little bit more. Good morning. Good morning. I'm down south, I thought. Okay. Good morning, Chairman Mahomes, members of the Board of Regents, Chancellor Sharp, President Legrand, any past presidents of Prairie View A&M, um, other esteemed platform guests, elected officials, honored delegates, family and friends, of, of Dr. Legrand, and last but not least, faculty, students, staff, and alumni of this wonderful university. I bid you all a very good morning. Good morning again. <clears throat> I'm delighted to be here with you today on this glorious occasion as we install Dr. Tamikia Legrand as the ninth president of this great institution. I'm especially honored that Dr. Legrand asked me to offer a few words on her day as it is great to be considered a mentor by such an accomplished woman. So thank you for including me. Yay, my girl. <laughs> so here I am at Prairie View A&M University, the first state-supported higher education institution in Texas with the precise mission to offer degrees to individuals of African descent. I am also leading the first Lincoln University, the first degree-granting historically black college in this nation. I remain in awe of the legacy of these institutions and how they can continue to produce 
um, the excellence that they do. I know firsthand what they can do. I know firsthand the transformative powers of the education that we offer. I'm a proud product of two historically black colleges, Lincoln University and Howard University. And I'm very clear that I stand before you here today because of those two institutions. Because the standard of excellence that they set for my educational pursuits and because of the belief in myself that was reinforced throughout my educational journey. But even as historically black institutions continue to outperform all other types of colleges and universities when it comes to producing black excellence, many of our organizations are struggling. They're struggling with enrollment, struggling financially, struggling to keep up with crumbling infrastructures due to excessive deferred maintenance, and the list goes on. But the good news is that Prairie View is thriving. The most recent U.S. News ranks this institution 24th among its 100 plus HBCU peers, and she continues to be among the leaders in producing black architects, black engineers, and black nurses. Enrollment is, in, is, is robust on this campus, and this place is absolutely beautiful. And so there's so much to celebrate. I do know, though, that it takes a community to produce such impressive outcomes. The faculty who dedicate themselves to educating and nurturing students, the staff who provide support across the institution from facilities to academic support. And there are the students who, who avail themselves to all that Prairie View has to offer and emerge as living testaments to the impact of this university. But we cannot forget the role of a powerful leader. The success of any organization requires a leader who is committed to the mission and provides vision and direction towards realizing the highest goals. A leader who possesses the complex set of skills needed to move the work of an institution forward. Dr. Legrand's 20-year progressive journey to this presidency has demonstrated transformational leadership many times over. She has helped to positively impact retention and graduation rates. She has increased enrollment and improved the student experience at every institution she has worked. At Winston-Salem State University, President Legrand led our strategic plan, enrollment plan, that placed an emphasis on growth through retention. Her plan was used to not only restructure recruitment, focused on a greater yield of highly prepared students, but also to overhaul the university's approach to the first year program. The results of her leadership were stronger students, greater retention, and markedly improved satisfaction ratings from students across the university. Dr. Legrand has also shown her ability to manage and grow resources, even in the midst of changing expectations. President Legrand increased enrollment again at Winston-Salem State, even as we elevated our admissions requirements. She did so by clearly articulating the exceptional value of the education we offered um, persuading some of the best students in the pool to join the Ram family. She has affected similar results at the University of Houston downtown and more recently at Virginia Commonwealth University. Her success is predicated upon effectively managing institutional resources, making strategic investments in high demand areas like recruitment and technology, growing institutional resources through enrollment growth securing legislative, research, grant funding, and working with advancement offices to increase fundraising for scholarships, programs, and capital projects. Dr. Legrand's success is largely about stakeholders believing in a vision and trusting leadership to make decisions to support that vision. She accomplishes this through building relationships. As Associate Vice Chancellor for Enrollment Management, Dr. Legrand made it her business to know virtually every high school counselor in every feeder school in the state of North Carolina. She brought those professionals to the campus and not only told them about the exciting things happening on campus,
but also showed them the fruits of our labor, that being our amazing students. Her relationships with counselors and her ability to tell student success stories made all the difference in our ability to recruit and retain some of the best students in North Carolina. President LeGrand leads collaboratively and transparently, and she actively involves colleagues from across the institution as she pursues common goals. She seeks to communicate openly and clearly with members of her boards, her students, alumni, state and local officials, and the community at large to ensure that all stakeholders understand and support where the goals are heading. I expect that building and maintaining strong relationships um, with groups and individuals are already a hallmark of her efforts here as president of Prairie View A&M. But even strong leaders need support. Support from their governing boards, support from their state and local officials, support from the leadership team, support from the university community, the faculty, the staff, the students, and of course, support from the alumni donors and other friends. All too often, leaders lack the support needed to accomplish the task of running a university. Consider that the average tenure of a college president fell 56% between 2006 and 2023. The average tenure of a university leader fell from 8.5 to 6.5 years. For black women, that number is 4.4 years. And for black women leading HBCUs, that number is a mere 2.1 years. Consider that in 2023, one in four HBCUs announced a leadership change. While the reason for these changes are often not communicated clearly, experience has shown that departures are often the result of fraught relationships with governing boards and other university constituents. Leadership changes are disruptive to institutional continuity. Changes interrupt strategic direction, relationship building, the things that matter to the university, the community, to legislators, to corporate and foundation partners, and of course, to alumni and other donors. The bottom line is that the lack of continuity, coupled with enrollment, financial, and infrastructure struggles, often prevent institutions from moving forward on an important goals. So basically, the success of any institution is based upon having a leader who is experienced and dedicated to the mission, and one who has the support and confidence of their boards, the university community, and other friends of the institution. Dr. Legrand brings years of experience and love for the mission of this presidency. I pray that she receives the support needed to pursue common goals for this great institution towards stewarding Prairie View A&M into her next chapter of glory. When I left Brown University to become provost at Winston-Salem State, Ruth Simmons gave me a brooch. And so She gave me this brooch to wish me success in my next chapter. The brooch was given to Ruth Simmons by Dr. Janetta B. Cole, who had given it to Ruth when she became president of Smith College. So I have cherished the gift as I'm proud to be among the legacy of those two women. And so today I wanna to pass this brooch on to you with my sincere wish for your success and confidence and leadership. So, welcome to the legacy. Love you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Allen, for your keynote address and your continued mentorship of President Legrand. And certainly, thank you to this concert chorale for that inspiring <laughs> selection. Truly, we will rise. We have come to that moment that we all have been waiting for, the focal point of today's ceremony the investiture of Dr. Tamikia P. Legrand as the ninth president of Prairie View A&M University. I am honored to welcome to the podium the chairman of the Texas A&M University Board of Regents, Mr. Bill Mahomes, who will make the formal investiture presentation. Please receive Chairman Holmes. Good, uh, the good morning, good morning to everyone. It is my honor today to bring greetings on behalf of the Texas A&M University System and its Board of Regents and to formally to welcome Dr. Tamika Legrand as only the ninth president of uh, this great institution, uh, Prairie View A&M University. Dr. Legrand has proven her merit for this immense responsibility by making a positive impact in a succession of leadership roles. I had the good fortune to serve on the search committee that identified Dr. Legrand as the system's top choice for the job. We chose well, and we chose carefully, and we chose well. So I know that she has been a difference maker throughout her career and in everything she has taken on. We were especially impressed 
with her commitment to a form of academic excellence and administrative flexibility that prepared students to be lifetime achievers, people who think critically and adapt quickly to changes in business and society at large, some of which uh, we have not yet imagined. She has a track record of nurturing students' success with a data-driven approach that ensures all students get the support they need from faculty, staff, and ad administrators. In fact, she's a national authority on this subject, and she is called to Congress from time to time to testify on this subject. Uh, Dr. Legrand employs the kind of smart thinking the Board of Regents hopes for and counts on from leaders at all of its 11, university, 11 universities and eight state agencies. In uh, taking office, uh, Dr. Legrand stands on the shoulders of giants. From the pioneering work of the earliest principles to the triumphs of its modern presidents. Their leaders have left a legacy as one of America's great HBCUs. Dr. Legrand has much to build upon. And I could just speak personally on a personal note for a second. Uh, I want to express my gratitude to this university and other HBCUs. I grew up in uh, East Texas in the uh, 1950s and early 60s, an era where artificial barriers to education were the rule, not the exception. And while my parents did not have the opportunities to attend colleges, all my teachers in grade school and high school graduated either from here or another HBCU. I uh, cannot thank them enough for what they did for me and my generation. Because without them, we would not have been uh, pre uh, prepared to pursue opportunities that serve this country or to participate in the American dream. In the same way, I cannot thank the faculty, staff, and administrators here enough for what you do for students, past, present, and uh, future. You can rest assured that the Texas A&M University System and this Board of Regents understand the importance of this university to future generations of Texans who will come here for an education that can literally prepare them for life. Under Dr. Legrand's strong and capable leadership, we have every confidence this university will rise even higher, lifting students from all backgrounds to reach their personal best. And now, I would like to welcome uh, to the stage uh, President Legrand and Chancellor John Sharp of the Texas A&M System for the presentation of the Presidential Symbols of Office. I have the great honor today to install a great president for a great university. Uh, easily, this university is the best HBCU in Texas, but not only that, it's one of the top HBCUs in the country. Over the last several years, over the last several years, this university in research and academics has risen faster in the rankings than any HBCU in the United States of America. And you are, without question, the most beautiful campus in the Texas A&M University system, so congratulations. So I have the honor of uh, formally installing uh, President Legrand into her job. Uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, we had a vacancy, we had a search committee. 
So I appointed a search committee of regents, and on that search committee were students and faculty and staff and former and, uh, alumni. And there were over 100 people from all over the nation that applied for this job. And that group of people, many of which are in this room, if not all of them, uh, sent this name toward me with words like strong, decisive, you know, I can't say one of the things that they told me, but, but one, of the students, one of the students told me, he said, if this lady were a racehorse, her name would be Secretariat. That's what she called it. <laughs> but she is living up to those, those expectations. So I have some magic words I have to say. They tell you I have to pronounce everything perfectly or she won't be a legitimate president. So, uh, Dr. Legrand, I have the honor of presenting you with the presidential medallion. It signifies in our, our trust in you, the medallion is infused with tradition and honor and is a symbol of the responsibility to inspire, mentor, and serve the students of this institution. On behalf of the Texas A&M System Board of Regents and on behalf of the Office of Chancellor, and as an expression of our confidence in your ability to discharge the multiple duties of your office with high principles and moral strength, we present you this medallion as a symbol of the Office of President of Prairie View A&M University. With this mace and this medallion, the Texas A&M University System confers upon you the title President Prairie View A&M University. Congratulations, President McGrath. I will now present the uh, mace of office. Uh, once a weapon of war, the mace is an, in academic uh, tradition is a symbol of institutional authority. It uh, signifies the university's power to protect knowledge against those seeking to undermine it and represents the university's commitment to intellectual honesty, integrity, and civic tr trust. On behalf of the Texas A&M Board of Regents, it is my great privilege to present the Mace of Office to Dr. Legrand. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the ninth president of Prairie View A&M University, Dr. Tamikia P. Legrand. Thank you, thank you. I see so many faces that I remember and know. It's so beautiful to see all of you all this morning. Good morning. morning. You know, I approach today's formal installation as president of Prairie View A&M University with a sense of honor, with a sense of humility, and in the same manner that I approach each and every day. 
with an overwhelming sense of gratitude. And so I'll begin with a few thank yous. And because of the phenomenal performance of our concert chorale, I must start with you. If you would please stand so that we can thank you for your beautiful performances today. <laughs> Chairman Mahomes, Regent Brooks, Chancellor Sharp, thank you for the vote of confidence and support you've given me since my appointment. I'm confident that with your leadership and continuous support of Prairie View A&M University, we will reach amazing heights together. Thank you to all of the platform guests for your greetings and comments. My heart was warmed with each and every one. Our partnership is valuable, and our relationships together only serves to make our university stronger. To my friend, mentor, and colleague, Dr. Brenda Allen, so that I won't cry, I will simply say thank you for everything. Thank you to all the elected officials on the stage and in the audience. We heard from State Representative Ron Reynolds, our chairman of the Texas Black Caucus, and our good friend, State Representative Stan Kitzman. But I also understand there are others that are present. The Prairie View City Council member, David Allen, Commissioner, Waller County Commissioner Kendrick Jones, our Houston City Council member Tiffany Thomas and Carolyn Shabazz, Evans Shabazz, and Dr. Lalani, State Representative District 76. Can I ask all state representatives, those whose names I call and those who we have not yet seen, to stand to be recognized? I not only want to thank you so much for your attendance today, but I want to thank you for your past and future advocacy for Prairie View A&M University and issues that impact our success. To all of the delegates and guests in the audience, thank you for attending. So many of you have journeyed from across the country to participate in this occasion. Even my former chancellor, Dr. Donald J. Reeves of Winston-Salem State University. Some of you have come from as far as New York and as far as California. Among you are former coworkers, former students, college and high school classmates, a few of my mentors, a few of my mentees, and my soror the women of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. It is not lost on me that you could have been anywhere else this morning, but the fact that you chose to be here in support of this moment is deeply appreciated. I must also give my heartfelt thank you to the Prairie View A&M University family and community, our faculty, our staff, our undergraduate and graduate students, our alumni, friends, and partners of the university. This community has embraced me and my unapologetic authenticity, my commitment to excellence. They've accepted me while also sharing with me their passions and hope and pride for this university. You've shown me that there is no place like PV. Thank you for welcoming me into your family. And speaking of family, I want to take this moment to thank mine. You all hear all this yelling that's taking place? All 30 plus of my family members who travel from Georgia, North Carolina, Washington State, and other parts of Texas to be here today, and there's probably another 50 watching online. I thank each of you for your undoubted support and confidence and encouragement of me. Thank you. To my sister, Colada, who you all saw has a lot of personality. My nieces, Amory and McKaylee. My mother and first mentor, Barbara. 
and my partner in this life, Brian. I could not ask for a better sister, niece, mother, partner than any of you. You all are indeed my biggest supporters and sometimes biggest critics for that matter. And all of you and my father Thomas, who is no longer with us, have been on this journey to this seat from the beginning, cheering me along all the way. I will tell you when the decision was made that I was to become Prairie View's ninth president, the pride and joy on my family's face was unforgettable. It was clear to me in that moment that I am truly my ancestors' wildest dreams. <clears throat> I want to thank all of you for allowing me to dream big and supporting me even when you didn't understand what I was doing. You supported me anyway, and I love each and every one of you. As special as this day is for me, I also know that this moment is so much bigger than me. This investiture ceremony represents the continuation of our university's quest for excellence a quest that Prairie View A&M University has been on since its founding in 1876. The inauguration theme of significance, relevance, eminence is reflective of that continuous journey. It reflects our intentionality in esteeming our legacy, staying true to our mission, and strategically envisioning our future. Our legacy reveals significance. Our mission holds relevance, and our future promises eminence. Those statements encompass our past, present, and our future. We could not be what we are today, nor would we be able to envision all that we can become if it were not for the foundation that was laid for us. I truly believe that it is impossible to spend time on this beautiful campus without feeling the core of what makes Prairie View so very special. Think about it. In 1876, what we now know as Prairie View A&M University was founded on a 1,400-acre plot of land that up until our founding had been Alta Vista Plantation, a plantation that at its height was populated with over 400 enslaved Africans who were treated cruelly, worked unceasingly, and denied the right to read and write. That place, Alta Vista Plantation, existed solely for the purpose of degradation, to rob of humanity and profit from the labor of our enslaved ancestors. And yet, even with that deplorable history, Two visionary men were able to dream a vastly different future. Born into slavery, Matthew Gaines and William Holland understood that true freedom comes from freeing one's own mind, which is only possible through education. Not satisfied with mere emancipation, Gaines consistently agitate, agitated for equality for his fellow black Texans. And with determination and resilience, he and Holland led the efforts that would birth Alta Vista Agricultural and Mechanical College of Texas for colored youth, today Prairie View A&M University, from a plantation that enslaved Africans to a transformational educational oasis that has freed the minds of thousands. This is Prairie View A&M University. Imagine yourself dreaming as big as Gaines and Holland, having the courage and the foresight to envision a place that would educate people who, when those very people never had access to education. Imagine that from your hopes and your dreams, an educational giant would be conceived, would evolve, and transform the lives of thousands. That is the powerful Prairie View legacy. And it is indeed our inheritance. That's why it is important and imperative that we demand and expect nothing 
but excellence from ourselves because our founders destined us for greatness from the very beginning. In many ways, my personal story, like Prairie Views, is one of transformation. I'm a descendant of rural Georgia families whose primary source of income came from farming. And they worked hard to own and maintain the ownership of the land that they worked. I grew up in a loving family with very modest means. I was a Pell Grant recipient. And by the federal standard and definition, that meant I lived 200% below the federal poverty level. But it never felt that way. Love always took care of all. But I also became the first in my immediate family to graduate from college with a four-year degree. I and my parents, just like Gaines and Holland, understood that education could afford me opportunity that would open doors for me and those connected to me, doors that had not always been open to my parents. Within the environment of the HBCUs I attended, Savannah State University and later North Carolina a and I acquired knowledge, had my intellect challenged, and was exposed to new ideas. I learned to open myself up to possibilities. And I learned that education provides exposure, which makes possibilities limitless. That is why this university's mission is relevant. 148 years later, while we have evolved, our mission has not fundamentally changed. We still exist to provide opportunity and access to a generation of individuals who continue to be underrepresented in higher education. Black, Hispanic, low-income, first-generation students, whether first-generation in college or first-generation in this country. Beyond providing educational access, this university has empowered communities, cultivated leaders, and driven social change. It has been a catalyst for building a portion of the black middle class in this state. It is not unrealistic, nor is it hyperbole, to suggest that this place, this university, is indeed life-changing, as it has done so for so many of the students that have entered the halls of our university. And it is because of that that I am inspired and motivated and determined to ensure that others receive the same opportunity, not just access to education, but the opportunity of empowerment. Even in these uncertain times in which we live, it is imperative for us to ensure that a Prairie View education is accessible and obtainable. Dynamics are constantly shifting, especially in higher education. There is political dissension, the global economy, changing demographics, questions about the funding of public higher education, and exponential advances to technology are all very real issues that impact our core business. Taking in this constantly changing landscape, it's easy to become discouraged. And yet, when I think about Prairie View against this backdrop, I'm hopeful. I truly believe that I am here at this moment for a particular purpose. My being in this role is not by accident, it is the result of intensive preparation, passion, and commitment, and the timing is right. Often when people meet me for the first time and realize that I'm the president of Prairie View A&M University, they often respond with, wow, you're young. And while I generally reply with thank you for the compliment, I do also wonder if people said the same thing to Rosa Parks, the mother of the civil rights movement, who was 44 when she refused to give up her seat in a whites-only section of the bus when the bus driver demanded she move. Or perhaps to Martin Luther King, who at the age of 26 led the Montgomery boycott and later became the leader of the civil rights movement and still today one of the most memorable figures in history. Or Malcolm X, who was only 35 at the height of his work in empowering the black community. 
or Shirley Chisholm, who was 44 when she became the first black woman elected to Congress, or Gandhi, who was also 44 when he utilized nonviolent resistance in a civil rights campaign, or maybe John F. Kennedy, who was the 35th president of the United States and elected to office at the age 43, or Susan B. Anthony, a leader in the women's rights movement and abolitionist crusade at the age of 33. Now, let me be clear. I am in no way comparing myself to any of these historical figures, because I know how we do. Y'all leave here and say, the president thinks she's just as good as Martin Luther King. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that youthfulness does have its assets as well. There is positivity. There is fresh new perspectives. There's energy and willingness to take calculated risk. And when you think about those assets, coupled with experience, skill, wisdom, and a passion for people, oh my, now you got a movement. And let me just be honest, I'm here for all of that, the movement. I am not just here for a moment. I believe that we have a formula here at Prairie View to catapult, catapult a new movement toward our future. But in order to do so, we cannot be so tied to what has been that we are unable to see the possibilities of what can be. We cannot be so committed to our current state of existence that we are blind to the possibilities of doing and being even better. Now, better does not mean leaving everything behind. That would be foolish because we have so much upon what we can build. But instead, it does mean understanding and leveraging our significant history and our traditions with our current mission while courageously pushing toward eminence. From this day forward, our primary focus is sustaining and building on the excellence that is Prairie View A&M University. And to be explicit, my vision for Prairie View A&M University is eminence. Prairie View will be a premier research intensive public HBCU that serves as a national model for student success. Yes, excellence lives at Prairie View A&M University. We prepare the hearts and minds of students to be career ready, lifelong learners. We research to discover solutions to global problems, but we can and we will do more. We are in the midst of building our 10 year strategic plan that will provide us with the measurable goals, strategies and objectives to achieve this vision of eminence but more importantly, the plan will provide us the financial model needed to achieve this visionary state. We will then, as a community, have a common language and a narrative to advocate for our university to garner the support and resources needed over time. Now, I know, of course, change causes trepidation. And I know it's easier to cling to the familiar rather than walking down a new road. But here's what I also know. Throughout the course of my 20-year career, the most important lesson that I have learned is that it is OK to be afraid. It is OK to be uncomfortable. But it is not OK to let fear stop you. Fear limits you and your vision. It serves as blinders to what could be a blessing that might just be a few steps down the road. The journey is valuable, but believing in our collective talents, abilities, and self-worth can empower us to walk down an even brighter and bolder path. This is why leadership is so important. And by leadership, I don't mean a particular individual or position. When I think of leadership, I think of it much more as a disposition than it is a position. Dispositions are professional attitudes, values, and beliefs that are demonstrated 
through verbal and nonverbal behaviors. In short, leadership is a state of being. It's a way of thinking and operating. And I would like leadership to be a disposition of Prairie View A&M University. This idea is not far-fetched. If you think of the historic context of HBCUs, our universities were founded to have a profound impact on both the lives of our students and the broader communities that they serve, creating leaders for the community because of the long-standing tradition of fostering skills among their students. And Prairie View is no exception. Prairie View does indeed produce productive people, leaders and change makers, but I challenge us to elevate to the next level. We cannot leave our university or our students' futures to chance. The world is changing, and we must be more intentional about preparing nimble individuals to lead in the future. So over the next year, we will commit ourselves to the idea that leadership is a disposition for Prairie View A&M University, and that everyone in our community should embrace leadership as a state of being, and thus we must all possess fundamental leadership skills to operate in a premier research-intensive public HBCU. This means that we will find ways to develop and enhance leadership abilities in all institutional stakeholders. We will develop leadership development programs and opportunities designed to meet the evolving needs of faculty and staff to allow for growth and opportunity at our university and pathways to leadership positions. We will hold ourselves to new standards of accountability to ensure performance excellence in every academic, student support, business, and facilities department. We will understand the socio-political context, systems, and practices within which all leadership resides, and equip our students with the technical and theoretical expertise needed but also with the professional skills need, needed for leadership in their careers, communities, and broader society. Our students are brilliant and worthy of the absolute best our community has to offer. But our community also needs this pipeline of talented leaders. In order to fulfill this charge, our strategic plan will outline needed investments in our curriculum to make sure it is and remains cutting edge. Our strategic plan will outline needed investments in our infrastructure so that our buildings and labs and physical plant are up to the same standards that we demand from our faculty, staff, and students. Our strategic plan will outline needed investments in our research enterprise to ensure that our faculty are able to continue making groundbreaking discovery to solve society's greatest challenges. Our strategic plan will identify needed investments in our student support model and experience to ensure that our students are being developed holistically, academically, socially, physically, and mentally. And to begin, this fall, we are launching a new student support model that we call PV Cares, in which we will assign every undergraduate student a care team a team of three individuals, a professional academic advisor, a financial counselor, not a financial aid counselor, a financial counselor who will help them in developing the foundation for financial literacy while also figuring out how to pay for college and a career coach. Those three individuals <laughs> will help lead students to graduation. It will be the first model of its kind at scale, all designed to ensure that our students are receiving the support of a team of individuals assigned to them by school or college to help guide them to timely degree completion, but also placement in career or graduate and professional school within six months of graduation, in addition to our faculty who will continue to serve as mentors. As you can see, we have a bold and ambitious plan. And to achieve it, we need supporters. We need partners. We need ambassadors. We need investors. 
We need all of you sitting here today and watching online. Did you know that out of about 3,000 higher education institutions in the United States, Prairie View A&M University ranks number 15 producer of African Americans with baccalaureate degrees. We are the number one producer of African Americans in architecture in the nation. We are number three in the nation for producing African Americans in engineering. I'm not finished yet. And we're number six in the nation for producing African Americans in agriculture. Now, imagine how much more we could do with deeper partnerships, with stronger ambassadors, and financial investors and corporations, nonprofit organizations, state and federal government, and our alumni base. It is my desire that we progress from transactional relationships to transformational ones. If you or your organization benefits from the talent and genius that exists here and is cultivated here at Prairie View A&M University, then we need you to invest in our institution, invest in our programs, invest in our faculty, invest in our students. In other words, if you are harvesting our fruit, we need you to feed our roots. The vision for Prairie View A&M University will continuously challenge the standard. It will continuously push us past mediocrity. It will remind the world consistently that opportunity, access, and excellence are not mutually exclusive, but they are most impactful when they are a trifecta and when they are valued and embraced. Earlier this week, I met with retirees. And I told them that I truly believe that those who walk these 1,400 acres before us demand that we go forward with a more accelerated pace so that the world does not leave us behind. And when I saw the movie The Woman King, starring Viola Davis, which some of you may have seen, it included a strong reference to the ancestors' connection to the wind. And now any time the wind blows on this campus, I feel hands pushing me in my back, pushing us forward to face new challenges to ensure that Prairie View A&M University rele relevantly stands forever. We have to push ourselves forward without hesitation we owe it to them, those bold individuals, to make sure that as this world changes and evolves, Prairie View A&M University is at the forefront of change. We say excellence lives here, so we must be bold and innovative in showing the world exactly what excellence looks like. The inauguration theme, significance, relevance, eminence reflects our intentionality in esteeming our legacy, staying true to our mission, and strategically envisioning our future. And the vision guided by a university-wide leadership disposition is clear. Prairie View A&M University will be a premier public research-intensive HBCU that serves as a national model for student success. And so I ask you, are you ready? Oh, that was too weak. Are you ready? Because the movement starts now. And I invite you to join us as we journey toward excellence, toward eminence. Excellence lives at Prairie View A&M University. It always has, and it always will. Thank you.
You may be seated. Dr. Legrand, on behalf of the Prairie View a and University community, we welcome you to the Hill. And we are excited and we look forward to all that will be accomplished under your visionary leadership. Well, we've come to the end of our time together. And certainly a program of this magnitude, as well as all of this week's events, could not be possible without the hard work of individuals. So I'd like for us to appreciate the inauguration committee under the leadership of Ms. Sheena Crittington, co-chair, and Ms. Carol Campbell, as well as the steering committees and all who have worked hard and diligently. As an audience, you've been wonderful today, and I thank you for the opportunity to preside over today's festivities. Now, would you please stand for the singing of the alma mater and the benediction by Dean Luter, after which I will come back with parting remarks regarding our recessional. Please bow your heads. May the peace of our Creator be experienced like never before. May we seek guidance as we travel throughout the rest of this year like never before. May the Almighty One's light direct your path to strive for excellence like never before. Let us be mindful that Prayer Review will continue to produce productive people. May your travels be blessed with the peace and love of our Creator. And let us all say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please remain in place as the University Marshal closes the ceremony and the platform guest exits the building. <laughs> 